This week's Rack of the Week is unusual and textbook at the same time. What does that mean? Well, let's find out. Uh, a little unusual. This is two rails behind the rack from the side pocket. And that's uh, that's a fairly good result. You're going to often hit this corner ball, come out. You'd like to have some spin so the cue ball might actually come out here and give you a better opportunity at some shots. But this is okay. I have one shot, real thin cut on this, this uh, four ball. And so there's not much to do with the cue ball. This is a re-break. Just a good follow stroke as best you can. And a uh, real good result. There's uh, no two balls touching. I got two balls up table. This looks like a real good break ball. This one might be too close to the rack. This one's a little high. This one's a little low. Now, I've already made my decision. I'll, I'm not going to pause this video too much, but... I'm uh, the only shot I have is the three, and I've checked to make sure there's room past the four just barely. So I'm a little bit fortunate there. So after shooting the three, I'll have a shot on the two. But it's a good decision to look around, and I th may have played this in a in a way to uh, keep my options open. And I've talked about going top down. So rather than shooting this two, I'm going to go to the top of the rack. R I hope it's an obvious reason why. That's because I, I'm almost straight in when the cue ball's here. I can shoot these, any of these three balls go in this pocket. So I'm really, I'm addressing really the only problem area on the table. You know, the other problems are the up table balls and then the 11 does not pass the 15. So those are the two issues I have to worry about. And so I'm solving the rack. Shooting the two ball here is a huge mistake. So you've got to shoot the six. You can get at these balls and then shoot the two later. Um, Let's see how I make that happen. Okay, so I think here one option would be to simply do a, a little drawback. Just draw back here and you can shoot the 14 and then the 2. Everything's getting really open if you do that. I choose instead to bump the 14. That's okay. Now I've got a couple of balls that both go in this pocket or all three of these go there. And notice I'm looking right to the 8. You know, it can be, it can feel like, you know, this is the obvious shot is to, Go over here and shoot the 14 or the 2. Those are easy shots, and you're right there. You've got to look a little bit further. In other words, I need to get position on this 8 at some point. Well, I have position on it now, so why not use it? And so I've got a slight angle. This is a 100% make. It's not like it's a difficult shot, but the reason to choose it is it's a natural tangent line up here. So I'm dealing with my next problem on the table. Shooting the 14 or 2 would be a mistake because they are not a problem. They can be beneficial later. Don't shoot off your, your easy shots and leave the problem. So in that sense, this is textbook. Even though the layout of the balls might be a little bit unusual. Okay, so I'm obviously I'm going to clear these two balls and then come back down table. So you look at the rack, I've already made my decision, but uh, I'm committing to the five ball as the key ball, I mean as the break ball, but there's no key ball above it. So what am I going to use for a key ball? These can work, but they're not great. You usually don't want to pick a key ball below your break ball, although if you got the right angle, you could use the 15 and come out here. The 11 ball is not going to work. Well, the 11 ball could work. It doesn't pass now. That means I have to shoot the two and the 15 first or at least the 15 first, to be able to come back around for the 11 as the key ball. But I think if you, those of you who watch my videos enough know that I like the 14 as the key ball. Lots of angles on that 14 ball, and it's real easy to go. Two rails right up here. And so I'm already committing to the 14 as my key ball for the 5. I can use in the, any of these balls or probably these balls to get on the 14. Okay? So that means... What is the next problem to deal with? And it's this, these two balls. I either have to, uh, I'm going to shoot these balls, and I either have to play position for this window to get that 15 out of there, or come down here and play position for the two, which might be easier, because from the two, I could probably go like this and push the 11 ball up and make it a better key ball. I've got a lot of yellow lines there. Get a shot on the two to move the 11 ball up into key ball position, and then the 11, 15 is my insurance ball. So that's a possibility as well. Let's see how what happens. 
So that's all kind of textbook thinking, but you've got to think ahead. So you see these things ahead of time. It's a mistake to go from this nine ball and play position for these two balls. Those two balls are sitting great. They are not a problem. Address your problems. That's what I'm doing. So this is an attempt to get on that 15. And I did it in such a way that I, well, I probably have a shot on these or on the two. I was feeling good. I, this may look like a small window, but there's a, there's a pretty big, big uh, margin for error there that I can get on that 15. So anyway, I'm going to shoot the 15 now. Now you notice I'm taking a moment to think about this. Hmm. Now I need a pretty, pretty firm end pattern. If I shoot the 15 and play position for the two, I'm probably going to want to come this way to center table or around these balls. And then I've got to maneuver uh, to, to get all of these balls to use my 14 as the key ball. So what I finally decide is don't play position for a ball that you already have position on. In other words, a stop shot on this 15 and I'm already in good position for the 11 with natural position to get on two different balls. Think, think, I always think ahead and what's the easiest positional route with the least amount of cue ball movement. Now it's no sweat, just pocket these two balls and I can use the two ball to get on the 14. So a little unorthodox in that there was no good uh, key balls uh, above here, only one break ball to choose from. Kind of an unusual pattern, but textbook um, analysis and, and order uh, of balls. It just makes it uh, uh, routine. Get an angle on this 14, now come out. Now I make a little mistake here, and the mistake is that. And I'm, I've been working on this lately. This, this, uh, I shot this rack probably about four months ago, and I've been working on one thing, and that is uh, working on several things. But one of the important things I've been working on is here I am shooting my key ball, but I did not go look. I, I'm supposed to use your feet and walk over here to the head of the table and look exactly where do I want my break ball. When you do that, then you can pick the exact spot on this rail. Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? I mean, yeah, I'm talking get that precise. Exactly where on this rail do I want to hit so that my cue ball comes here? I didn't do any of that. I, all I had in my mind was, oh, two rails out, and I've got, I'm on my break shot. So what's, what's the result when you don't take the time to plan properly? By the way, it takes like 2.5 seconds to plan properly. What happens is you come too far and have too shallow of an angle. So you want to you wanna know how to run 100 balls. You want to know how to make long runs. It's getting good on your break shot. The break shot is the transition from rack to rack. If my cue ball in this break shot was here, I have a, gosh, probably three to four times higher chance of getting through this next rack. You want to, you want to give yourself that high percentage opportunity, and that's how you're going to link racks together. If you're always shooting marginal break shots, you're going to have shorter runs. That's a big lesson I've been lear learning in the last uh, couple of months. So shallow angle break shot, all I can do is stun to the side of the rack. I just want to stun, uh, hit the rack forcefully, and then stun the cue ball up. Let's uh, see how well this works out. Yeah, pretty well. Now, and, and so to repeat what I just mentioned, when you shoot a break shot, and this is probably about the best result I'm going to get on a break shot like that, Maybe I could have hit it a little bit harder, gotten the cue ball here, and a, maybe the three would have moved over, and a couple balls would have moved a little bit further. But I've got 10, 12 balls in the rack area. You're going to get through some of these racks, but a lot of them are going to be stoppers. So that's just to repeat the idea. You want to get a, bre you want to get a better angle on your break shots more often. As it is, I've got a shot. Uh, well, I don't know if I have a shot on this two ball. If I have a shot on the two, that's ideal because then I can use the eight to rebreak, and the ten back this way is insurance. As it is, I don't think I have a shot on that. I think I have a shot on the six, which is a very thin cut. I've got to go back and forth and hopefully get a shot on this, uh, this uh, four ball right here, which shows you how marginal it is when you don't have an optimal break shot. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it, and uh, thanks for watching. 
See you next week on Rack of the Week.